Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at the new Bing chat functionality built into Bing.com and Microsoft Edge. This has been all the craze over the last few weeks. In case you haven't heard, Microsoft has added AI to the Microsoft Bing search engine so it can now do all kinds of uh, complex and advanced tasks that previously Bing and other search engines couldn't do. And then there's also integration with Microsoft Edge that allows uh, it to analyze web pages and summarize documents and all of that other uh, interesting stuff, which we will get to in this video. But I want to start with the Bing.com experience because this is the experience most people will likely be using. So here we are on Bing.com. You'll notice that the search box here is much bigger than usual, unlike Google or old Bing, where it's just a sort of normal search bar. This is a box. It's a chat box. You can ask it anything, as it says. Uh, except we're not going to do that here. We're going to jump up into this link here called chats because this is the sort of chat interface that uh, Microsoft is really pushing here for this new experience. So you can see here we have a couple of conversation styles because remember, this is an AI. You're talking to a, a virtual assistant, technically. So you can use natural language to communicate. It's not like typing in a command. You can talk like a human and it will reply like a human. It will understand human language. And that's what makes this a really big deal. But here you can see we have conversation styles. We have a more balanced conversation style, which is the default option, which is what you'll be using for most tasks. Then there's a more creative uh, style and a more precise style. Now Microsoft has these three styles because the AI can sometimes misbehave. If you're looking for pure facts, in the past, in, in the sort of earlier previews, it was just throwing in random sort of opinions and, and ideas it thinks would be great. So they've added these conversation styles so you can sort of tell it, no, no, I just want I just want facts. I don't need your opinion, Bing, but thank you. Uh, but yes, if you want to actually go back to that, you can actually select more creative. And as it says here, responses will be original and are imaginative, creating surprise and entertainment for you. Whereas more balanced is responses are reasonable and coherent, balancing accuracy and creativity in conversation. And then there's a more precise one, which is like, nope, just facts, please. Don't want you to tell me why you think this is good or bad. Because again, it's an AI. It will give its own opinion, or at the very least, it will pull in other humans' opinions and uh, present them as a general opinion that most people may agree with. So here we are. We'll stick with more balance for now. Uh, so what can you do with it? Well, you can search the web. So let's say we want to know when the next season of Ted Lasso is out. When is the next season of Ted Lasso airing? Now, I won't cut in any of this out because I want to show you how quickly this assistant uh responds in real time uh, it's not the fastest in the world you know searching a, a more traditional search is much faster but you can see here it says hi this is being according to multiple sources ted lasso season three will premiere on wednesday march 15 2023 on apple tv plus are you a fan of the show now you can choose to reply to it if you want to be nice to the ai or you can uh, not reply to it and i think it will be just fine but you can see here it also includes sources so if you wanted to dive into this uh, topic more and actually read from source material you can do that through these learn more links at the bottom uh, you can see down here we also have a bunch of suggested replies and as well as a, a sort of indicator down of how many messages that have been sent. Now, right now, this says one of 10. This number here is always changing. So by the time you get access to Bing AI, it may be one of 100 or there may not even be accounts there anymore because the replies you can get back are unlimited. But as of right now, it's limited to 10 per topic. And you can see down here there is a new topic button for when you want to start asking it about other things. So if you wanted to continue this topic of conversation, perhaps I want to know how many episodes there are in season three. That may not be public information. If it isn't, then Bing will say that. But if it is, it will pull that in or rather hopefully pull that in. Uh, so we can see here how many episodes are there in this season? We'll see if it also remembers that I'm asking about season three because I've only said this season here. Here we go. So, yep, you can see it says season three episodes. We'll see if uh, it pulls back an answer. So according to facts results and a web result, Ted Lasso season three will have 12 episodes. The first episode will air on March 15 and the last episode will air on May 31st, 2023. Now that's really nice. So as you can see, so we've done two search queries here and found the answer we're looking for. Again, if you want to dive into these sources to actually uh, see uh, whether that's accurate or not, you can do that here. But for now, we'll trust Bing and assume that that is in fact the correct answer. Now where Bing really shines is with the ability to merge multiple queries together. So as you saw there, I asked two questions in two messages. That's essentially two search queries. However, if we reset this topic and ask the same question again however include both queries Bing will be able to pull that answer for me so I can say 
When does the next season of Ted Lasso air and how many episodes will it have? And in theory, Bing will now pull in the date for the next season and tell me how many episodes there are. There you go. See, it says, according to Screen Rant, Ted Lasso season three will premiere on Wednesday, the 15th of March, and we'll have 12 episodes. Are you excited for it? You know what? Yes, I love Ted Lasso. We'll see what Bing says to that response. I assume it will say, great stuff. Me too. It's such a heartwarming and funny show. What do you like most about it? All right, that's enough, Bing. Okay, so uh, that's an example of multiple queries. And this is where Bing really shines. Unlike traditional search, where you can only really do one search query at a time, with Bing, you could do multiple. So for example, a good one is, I have a wall that measures 15 foot by eight foot and want to cover it in paintings that measure four foot by three foot. How many paintings can I hang on this wall? So Bing will now do the math and figure out how many paintings I can hang on a wall that measures 15 foot by eight foot. To find out how many paintings fit on a wall, you need to calculate the area of the wall and divide it by the area of one painting. This area of a rectangle is the length times width. So the area of your wall is 15 foot by 8 foot, which is 120 square feet. The area of one painting is 4 foot by 3 foot, the area of 12 square feet. The number of paintings that fit on your wall is 120 divided by 12, which is 10. However, this does not take into account any gaps between the paintings or any other features on the wall that might prevent you from hanging them. So you are. The answer is 10. Thank you, Bing. And it even gave me a little walkthrough of how it worked that out. So if you are bad at maths and are trying to get better, you can sort of follow along here and see roughly how it managed to get to that conclusion. Now, I'm not good at math, so this answer could be wrong. And that's very important to remember with Bing AI. It is pulling in information from the internet, but that doesn't mean the information it's pulling is correct. It isn't a very smart AI in that it doesn't actually know the if what it's pulling in is correct. It can't fact check stuff. It's just looking at the most common answer from a number of mods, from a number of sources and so, and assuming that that is correct because most other people have said that this is the answer. So keep that in mind because you know not every website may be correct and if it pulls in a bunch of wrong answers from a bunch of sources then the answer it provides here will be wrong. However, I do know that 120 divided by 12 is 10. So that is probably right assuming it got the other measurements correct so there we are that is a good example of it merging multiple queries together you know for one it, it traditionally i would have had to figure out how many square foot my wall is then i would have had to search for how many square foot each painting is and then i would have had to figure out how many of those paintings can go on the wall however bing just did it all in one query and that is really the true power of Bing ai in search in addition to the web version, there's also a mobile app for iOS and Android. Uh, and the difference between this and the web version is that this prioritizes voice input. Now, of course, you can still use a keyboard and text input if you'd prefer. But for this demo, why not use the voice functionality? So here we are. How many Series X consoles can I fit in a Tesla Model 3? Searching for Xbox Series X dimensions. Searching for Tesla Model 3 trunk dimensions. That's an interesting question. According to my searches, the Xbox Series X has a height of 12.2 inches, 310 millimeters, a width of 6.3 inches, 160 millimeters, and a depth of 6.3 inches, 160 millimeters. The Tesla Model 3 has a maximum cargo space of 22.9 cubic feet, roughly 649 liters, which includes a front trunk of 3.1 cubic feet, 88 liters, and a rear trunk of 19.8 cubic feet, 561 liters. Assuming you can stack the consoles vertically and horizontally without any gaps, you could fit about 14 consoles in the rear trunk and about two consoles in the front trunk for a total of 16 consoles in the Tesla Model 3. However, this is a very rough estimate that does not account for any irregularities in the shape or size of the trunks or the consoles. Why do you want to know this? So as you saw there, it 
spoke the answers. Uh, however, it took a little while to do that. It didn't just tell me an answer. It, it walked me through the process of how you would come to a conclusion. Now, what's curious about this is that I asked this question again, and it gave me a different answer. So in this answer, I basically got the answer of 16 consoles uh, for the trunk. Uh, and then I asked this question again, and it gave me an answer of 81. But the second time I asked it, it gave me a much more detailed walkthrough. So I, I don't know what's what's different here, what, why it's giving me two different answers. Perhaps it's it's deciding between a Series X sort of retail box and then the actual console itself. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it comes to two different conclusions both times I asked it. One answer was much more detailed, the other one uh, less detailed, but still showed me a sort of walkthrough process for how it came to that conclusion. Um, but both answers are different. So this is why it's super important to remember that these... Um, AI bots aren't the be all end all they are only pulling data from the internet and even then they can misinterpret the data so keep that in mind in addition to Bing chat on the web Microsoft is also integrating this experience into Microsoft Edge now if we go to a website here such as windowscentral.com we can uh, go over to this little Bing icon in Microsoft Edge this is in preview right now so this will be launching at some point later this year uh, we can see here that we have uh, the same interface we were just looking at, the Bing chat interface, and this functions as you would expect. However, it's also more contextual now. So it's actually analyzing what's on my web page here. So I can ask it questions specific to the content that I'm looking at. So if you come into this article here, this is a kind of complex article with lots of jargon and words that I may not be interested in. So I can ask Bing to summarize what this article is saying. So summarize what this page is saying. And the theory, Bing will now read this web page and tell me a very short version of what it's trying to tell me. So this page is about Microsoft's new Canary channel for Windows Insiders, which will test early code for the next version of Windows, possibly called Windows 12. The page explains the differences between the Canary channel and other insider channels and how Microsoft is developing new features for both Windows 11 and Windows vNext. This page also mentions some examples of new features that have been added to Windows 11 via Moment updates. And since I wrote this article, I can tell you that that is pretty damn accurate so there we are that is how summarizing a web page works and at the top here we can also see an option for compose which is uh, unique to microsoft edge as well as insights so what insights does here is as i said it's already analyzing the page so it can pull in a bunch of useful facts and information related to the website and page contents so you can see here it's pulled in q a so what is the dev channel range for windows 11 with the dev channel now moving to the 23,000 range features should once again naturally make their way downstream from dev to beta the answer there 23,000, is correct so it pulled in that question and gave you the correct answer without me even having to look at the web page or read through it entirely what are the changes to the windows inside a preview program this here is basically uh, just the first paragraph of the page here so i guess that's nice <laughs> down here we have page topics so microsoft the canary channel windows 10 windows 11 and windows 10 canary which i'm not sure where it's getting that from but hey there you are uh, and then it's also pulling in a bunch of different uh, different articles on this same topic down here as well as an about for the website in in question and some analytics so we can see how much traffic windows central has been receiving and how we're on the rise because we are the best microsoft website around um as well as how many how people are finding this site and where traffic is from only eight percent from the united kingdom that makes me sad but there you are so that's a really interesting example of how bing chat and bing ai can help uh, enhance your general internet browsing so you don't have to be on bing.com to utilize it you can be in another web page and if you're using microsoft edge you can sort of access bing and it can read the contents of your web page and do things for you so for example i can ask it which i know it doesn't but we'll see if bing can figure this out does this web page mention anything about mac os No, this web page does not mention anything about macOS, so that's pretty cool. So if it's a very long article and you're just looking for a specific topic, you can just come in here and go, hey, does this web page mention X, Y, Z? And if it does, Bing will say, yep, here it is. And if it doesn't, it will say no, which is what it did there. Now, another great example of Bing AI within Microsoft Edge is the ability for it to read emails and reply to them. So you can see here I have an email uh, from me to me saying, hey, Zach, just wanted to reach out to see if you're on track with the report we discussed recently. Do you think it will be ready in time for the launch date next month? Now, I could reply to this email, but I'm feeling particularly lazy. So I'll go up to Bing and say, hey, Bing, um, let's start a new topic as well, just to make sure it's uh, all on the right track. Uh, can you reply to 
saying yes it will be delivered on time in a nice tone <laughs> so okay we'll make sure i'm being friendly in the email uh, but what Bing will do here is analyze the email that I'm looking at and write a reply to it. So again, it was sent from someone called Zach. So <laughs> it's now saying hi, Zach and bye, Zach, because I am also Zach. So it says, hi, Zach. Thank you for your email and for checking in on the report. I'm happy to inform you that I'm on track with the report and it will be ready in time for the launch date next month. I appreciate your support and guidance throughout this project. That is actually amazing. So if I say send this reply, will it actually be able to actually do it? Let's see. Okay, that's impressive. Okay, so if we go over to a oh, sent email, how do I do that? Here we go, sent email. Nothing is sent. Okay, <laughs> maybe it didn't send. <laughs> I'll check on the other inbox here. Hang on. Okay, so it wasn't able to send it, but you can just copy and paste the contents of that email into here, then hit on send without having to actually type it up yourself. So that's a pretty nice addition as well. Um, and yeah, and, and that's kind of the, a, a fantastic example of how Bing can enhance your browsing experience using Microsoft Edge, which is pretty cool. So in addition to the insights and chat functionality in the sidebar here, we also have a new compose feature. And this allows you to create bits of text using Bing chats uh, with specific tones and formats. So this is great for things like maybe social media. If you wanted to create a tweet, for example, uh, write a paragraph about the new Windows Insider Canary channel in 280 characters or less. So it fits in the tweets. We could change the, the tone from professional, casual, enthusiastic. We'll go with enthusiastic for this one. We want it as a paragraph uh, and then we also want it as short because it is a tweet. Then we can generate the draft here. And in a few seconds we should get a piece of content that is 280 characters less. Are you ready to experience the cutting edge of Windows? Join the new Insider Canary channel and get daily updates with the latest features and fixes. Be the first to test and provide feedback on what's coming next. Don't miss this opportunity to shape the future of Windows. Now, that wasn't something I would particularly write. We could change that. Let's say, move it to informational. Uh, informational. Let's regenerate that draft and see how it differs. So again, same characteristics, 280 characters. Length is short in a paragraph, but it now is a uh, informational piece of text rather than enthusiastic. So the Windows Insider Canary channel is a new option for testing early builds of Windows 11 and beyond. It offers the most experimental features and changes, but also the highest risk of bugs and instability. The Canary channel is for Windows insiders who want to preview the future of Windows before anyone else. That is excellent. So I can now select that and copy it. Or if you scroll down here, you will see that there is an option to add to site. That's good. If you are sort of highlighting a text box here, we can press add to site and it will just paste that text straight into the box. So for example, if you want twitter.com, you can insert that text straight into the twitter.com um, post box, whatever they call it, <laughs> and uh, compose box. There you are. And then press on tweet. So that's pretty cool. We can also try write a blog post. So we can have this as a professional blog post. Uh, let's get rid of the character limit there because now it's a blog post. We don't really have a limit. Uh, let's say in around 600 words. And now we can generate that draft. We can have medium length. And in theory now, this will do its best to generate a piece of content about the topic we've said in roughly 600 words in the format of a blog post uh, using a professional tone. So we've got a little, we've got our title here. Uh, we've got our intro here. Brilliant. And so that's great. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to copy and paste this directly. You'd want to make your own edits and all of that good stuff. Also, you shouldn't be using AI for work or at least for creative work because <laughs> you can get in lots of trouble. Um, so, yeah, this isn't something I can personally use. But you get the point here. You can see it's now writing that in the content. And then if we wanted to add that to the site, that would paste it into a, a, an available text field that we've got selected. And uh, there we are. So that is a quick look at the Bing AI functionality on Bing.com and Microsoft Edge. This is a big deal for Microsoft. They're planning to add AI functionality to all of its products. And Bing and Edge is just the start. We're expecting it in Office. We're expecting it in Teams. Uh, you name it. Wherever there's <laughs> a text field, Microsoft will be adding AI to enhance it in some way. So there you are. That's a quick look at Bing AI on Microsoft Edge and Bing.com. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.